I'm your host, Ken Patterson. We are at the 13th annual St. Louis Prototype Modelers Meet. I'm doing an outdoor photo shoot. We're going to talk about this table saw. That's absolutely magnificent. This is the best hobby in the world. The what's neat. What's neat. What's neat. What's neat starts now. Catch the What's Neat podcast every week and full episodes of What's Neat every month at the Model Railroad Hobbyist YouTube page. This is microphone, microphone. Everybody's got a microphone. Microphone. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Richard. Ryan camera for us tonight. Uh, this is going to be fun. We've got the guests from the NMRA on. This is awesome. I love the NMRA. Yes. Do you, do you now, have... I can't just look at you when I talk tonight. I've got to look at everybody. <laughs> Readers' comments. Oh, really? Ready. <laughs> Give us a... Wait, do you have the pencil with both ends on it? No, you're... You're safe. <laughs> I'm, I'm safe. Richard, okay. give us a countdown, just please. Let's, sure. Here we go. Let's do Three, this. Three, two, one. <laughs> The What's Neat This Week video podcast is supported by enthusiastic model railroaders just like you. <laughs> Further support is provided by Microengineering, keeping you on track with quality products for 55 years. Check out their website at www.microengineering.com. Order from your local dealer or order direct by calling 1-800-462-6975. Additional support is provided by Spring Creek Model Trains, your destination for model trains. Stop in and say, wow. Check out their website at springcreekmodeltrains.com. And by Intermountain Railway Company, where the detail makes the difference. Check out their website at intermountain-railway.com. Additional support is provided by Yelzma Graphics. America's leading distributor of quality railroad art and embroidered clothing since 1985. Check out their website at yelzma.com. Further support is provided by the NCE Corporation, the power of DCC. Visit their website at ncedcc.com. And thank you for supporting the What's Neat This Week podcast. This is the What's Neat This Week show in model railroading, show number 276 for June 1st, 2024. Oh my God, here comes summer. And here comes the RPM meet right around the corner. All right, tonight on this side over to me, I've got my Mike buddy. buddy. Hey, Mike. Hey, everybody. How are you? Hi. On Skype land tonight on this side of the screen over here, we have from the NMRA, Pat Raymer. He is the chairman for the NMRA uh, Surfliner. 2024 convention out in California coming up. Hello, Hi, Pat. Ben. Thanks for having us on. It's good to Appreciate have you on it. tonight. I love that hat. Thank you. That's really nice. Okay, next, on the other side of the screen, I've got Joel Morris. He's a co-chair for the Surfliner 2024 convention. Hello, Joel. Hey, guys. You guys are going to be here. Happy to see you all. Awesome. And they're going to tell us all about the convention tonight. A lot of news. Also sitting on this side of me, I've got Stephen Mantia. Hello, everybody. Hey, Steve. How's train show business? How's buying and selling trains? Uh, everything is very good, yes. Rock and roll. And on the very end, we have our very favorite, Daniel Coombs. Hi, guys. How y'all doing? I talked to the Great American Show, show Train Show people this week, mm -hmm. and uh, I reminded them that you are the one millionth visitor to the Great American Train Show. Oh, yeah, that's right. The 2013 NMRA convention that was here. Was it that long ago? It was that long ago. I wow. Man, 11 years. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, so tonight, um, I've got to first say, because Joshua asked us to please tell the viewers to vote for our favorite Josh to be America's next favorite chef. You can vote once a day. Okay, so now, I think he came in, what, second place in the last round of voting. Mm -hmm. So now he's in the top 20. Voting ends in 15 days. Um, I got the link, it's on my cell phone, and somehow I'm going to put the website on the screen to help out Joshua because we love him. What are you guys playing with? <laughs> Next, we're going to go over, we worked on the Garden Railroad Monday night. Daniel came over here. 
and in preparation for trying to get that thing ready for the RPM meet. Uh, I think I mean last Saturday night. What? Okay. Anyway, <laughs> Daniel was here in the middle of the night, and we worked on the Garden Railroad. We found a piece of track out there that was extremely bent due to the fact that I pulled a bush out and bent the track. That's my bad. <laughs> So he was out there using a torch to free up this piece of track. We decided to bring it inside to fix it. And the torch is for removing the electrical connections quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and then he took the whole thing apart. But what we do is we take a, a steel brush and we clean those rail la later on on the inside. Right. So the track is on the inside now on this clip. And you can see how bent this piece of rail is. We actually elected to put in a new piece of rail for this piece, I've got some extras in the uh, rafters in the event of something just like this. Of course, we got a bunch of ties. We showed a box of ties. Yeah, you got a whole box full. There's two cases of those just the last for the next 10 years. Um, so Daniel's now showing how we slide on the ties, and I didn't put that thing on the table that we wanted to show, but he's sliding the ties back onto the rail. These microengineering uh, tie sections come in six inch pieces. And the key to this is building this wooden jig that we use to hold the tie so every tie is completely parallel because if they start getting a little crooked, they'll lock up and you won't be able to slide the section on. So we made this little piece of wood with this gadget and it works beautifully. Um, and then tonight, Daniel was here and he replaced about 20 feet of ties out there on one side of the main line, Daniel. Nice. And he's yep. out there showing us his, his work. I didn't expect it. I thought you were one of the teenagers showing up here. And sure enough, it was you. And busy be down there trying to get it working, trying to get the intention of getting the guard railroad up and running for the RPM meet. Because I think there's a couple, uh, maybe in Rice and some G skin locomotives. I don't know yet. Right? We hadn't even so started we'll... working in the freight cars, and the engines are safe. They're on the shelves. Mm -hmm. So all they'll do is slowly crack gears if they're plastic, but otherwise it's all good. Yep. All right. Okay. So that was our segment on the Garden Railroad. So without further ado, let's go out to Joel and Pat, because we. A, there, Joel has an amazing layout he's going to show us tonight. And B, we want to know everything about this wonderful Surfliner 2024 show. And before I launch into it one more time, I want to tell you, I looked at your website, and it's one of the most professional NMRA website show sites I've ever seen. Good job. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. We'll pass that on to our webmaster. Okay. <laughs> All I'll right, Joel, where do you guys want to start about talking about this? Why don't I put up the website? We can start, and Pat can give a little introduction, and then we'll start talking about it and talk about some of the features and things that folks are going to be able to do while they're here. Perfect. That work? It sounds good. If I can share my screen, and there we go. Should be seeing it right about now. Oh my God! There it is. This is amazing. Wow. I'm not. Yes, this is amazing. Pat, take it away. All righty. Well, uh, as you can see at the top, our dates are August 4th through 11th, 2024, in the beautiful city of Long Beach, California. You'll look right down there and you'll see what the weather is right now, and that's uh, our, the current weather, and that'll be active all the way through <laughs> the convention. So when you're uh, uh, in uh, 100 degrees and 100% humidity, you can see how nice it'll be in Long Beach and give you a little more impetus to come on out. Um, we have a we have a brief video there on our homepage that uh, tells a little bit about it. Uh, our hotel is the Westin. It's two blocks from the beach. Beautiful location. Beautiful hotel. Um, we're offering all the. Uh, oh, I think did we click on our hotel? There we go. This is cool. Oh, by the way, Mike. Yep. Yeah. There's our. Uh, our, our, our nightly rate is 209. There's, uh, of course, taxes and, and fees and so forth on that. So it actually comes up to, as I recall, 247 a night. There will be uh, something about a destination fee, but that's been waived through our contract. So pay no attention to that. Uh, the parking is $12 a night with in and out privileges. So we, uh, oh, it's right there. He's highlighting it up at the top. So, uh, you go. We have, uh, when you compare this rate, uh, this is a resort hotel, two two blocks from the beach. It's a really great rate. Oh, it's a beautiful place, else. yeah. That's going on right now. Um, so this hotel, actually, if I may, this hotel uh, just received a $23 million renovation. So it's spanking new. Oh, wow. And really, 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 really nice hotel. Mm. I'd be very pleased with the, with the facilities. It really is gorgeous inside. It really is, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're, we're um, 
we're promoting the, the, the convention as a really as an opportunity to take the entire family to, to Southern California for the week. Um, bring your spouse. There's a million and a half things for non-model railroaders to do. Bring the kids. Uh, it can really be a terrific family vacation. Of course, everybody knows Disneyland is here. There's Knott's Berry Farm. About 15 minutes away is the USS Iowa battleship uh, uh, hmm. in port that's a, a floating museum. The Queen Mary, Catalina Island. Um, if you're a beach person, there's the quintessential Southern California beaches within five minutes. Uh, not five minutes, but 15 or 20 minutes of the hotel. Um, walk Main Street, hit the beach, hit the pier, have have dinner, have lunch, whatever. There's a million things. Venice, famous places: Venice Beach, Laguna Beach, Seal Beach, Manhattan Beach, Huntington Beach, Surf City. So, <laughs> we really recommend that you bring the family. The, the, your wife or girlfriend or your wife and girlfriend should come. <laughs> there are <laughs> yeah, bring them both <laughs> through the years, through the decades. It has always been a tradition of a lot of model railroaders out there that would schedule their family uh, vacations around the NMRA shows to be able to have the opportunity to travel around the country and meet modelers, other modelers that you would otherwise never be able to meet because there wasn't an internet. Mm -hmm. You know, it was the NMRA and these large conventions and the smaller, right. re, the little satellite ones. Well, yeah, the one we yeah. had at the Viking Hotel here every, every right. since 19, oh God, 73 or something. Um, how wonderful it was to meet the St. Louis modelers. Mm -hmm. Because you'd never meet them unless you went to a hobby shop. And what are the odds of, you right. know, and they don't want to be bothered by, yeah. you know, oh, you know. F f so the whole point was it was really neat in that these shows do just that. And that's another great thing about it. And you guys have got a lot of great layout tours, don't you? We do. Yeah. Um, actually, we have, let me see, we have five layout tours, one each day. A total of 24 layouts are going to be shown on those layout tours, and I have a few wow. pictures of the layouts we can talk about in just a couple of minutes. Um, but I want, just want to pick up on what Ken was talking about. The social aspect of these con uh, conventions can't be underrated. I mean, it's, it's really fantastic. I've, I've got friends who I met randomly through conventions who I keep in touch with from all over the country, mostly Australia and New Zealand, who I'm very excited to see. Um, another fellow who models the O&W who's coming in from, uh, I think he lives in Milwaukee or outside Milwaukee. I would never, I would never see him otherwise. Uh, so it's a, it's a fantastic so social event um, that can't be replaced by the internet. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the information you can certainly get on the internet, that's for sure. But you can't ask that backup question. You can't look in the guy's eyes and say, what, what do you mean by that? That you right. don't get on the internet that you can get in a right. clinic or sitting and having lunch with a guy who's, a, who's a, an MMR, who's, a, who's an expert in something. That's so true. Oh, just a couple of th just a couple more housekeeping things I want to mention. If you're going to come, the ideal place to fly into is Long Beach, a beautiful, simple, small airport that flies to a lot of different places. Um, second choice would be Santa Ana in uh, John Wayne Airport in Santa Ana. Again, both of these are 20 minutes, 25 minutes away. And then the last choice would be LAX, which is about 35 or 40 minutes away, but it's LAX, it's a giant international airport, not a picnic. You get to Long Beach is like flying in 1955, and and so is Santa Ana about flying. You know, you think both of them, I think, you know, Long Beach, you don't even, there, is, there isn't even a, fly, a skyway. You'd walk down the steps. And, okay. <laughs> hey, wow. Joel, I can't see your face when you're talking here. <laughs> ah, well, I'm, I got the screen up. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. So we're going we're to move on. We'll move on to the clinics. I'm not that good looking, Ken, but thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, let, let, I guess we could talk about the. I guess we could talk about the clinics. Correct. Let's do that first. All right. So let's talk about clinics. So we've got what we've done on the website is we've created clinics by category. So you can take a look at the clinics at the top, the category at the top. What do you want to What do you want to know about layout operations? Here's 11 clinics about layout operations, and you can come see me talk about developing a realistic rolling stock fleet for your operations, where you can put, look at prototype operations on key tracks. So all different sorts of clinic types from, and some of, a lot of these clinics are actually 104 clinics, and uh, we're putting we're adding new ones every day from 71 clinicians. 
a lot of these clinics are first time, you never have seen them ever before, unless you happen to be a Pacific Southwest region member, that clinic may have been given at a regional convention or at a local meet, but otherwise you would never have seen these before. And also we've got national clinicians who are gonna be doing clinics that you've probably seen before or new ones. So here's, here's a local one, Pajon at War, the San Bernardino Bomb Clinic. Fascinating clinic about the war era in Southern California. Um, so as I said, 104, 71 clinicians, really fantastic opportunity to see some great things. Right. Um, also, let's talk about the tours. The layout um, tours, yes. So we've, got, we've got great tours. And one of the things that I love about the tours, tours when I go to these conventions is that these are places you can't normally go as a human being, right? As a regular human being, you're not allowed in these places. Um, and to see them all with with uh, with a group of modelers and, and enjoy them that way is really, really uh, a, a treat. So we've got two, what are four, six, um, so six um, bus tours. Pat, why don't you talk a little bit about these? Okay. Um... Well, let's start with uh, number one there, Southern California Railway Museum. This uh, museum started in the 1950s here at Griffith Park in the Los Angeles area as a, uh, a group of trolley enthusiasts uh, wanted to uh, preserve the streetcars and interurbans they were seeing stacked up for recycling as the buses took over the Los Angeles area for transportation. Uh, they moved out to a place called Paris, which is uh, about an hour and a half out from Long Beach, and they have the West's largest railway museum there in Paris. Uh, you're seeing just some of the uh, the uh, rolling stock they, or the motor power that they have there. That's Ventura County Number no. Two, the steam locomotive that's operating out there. Um, there's a Santa Fe um, diesel locomotive. There's a Southern Pacific. That turntable, that gallows turntable, is the same as the one that's in Laws for the narrow gauge guys that are familiar with that. Uh, we have kind of a unique experience at the Southern California Railway Museum that we're offering, and that is the Run One. Uh, for an extra fee, you are, you will be able to go ahead and operate a diesel locomotive out there mm -hmm. if you're so inclined. Uh, so if you've ever wanted to sit in the engineer's seat, uh, operate the throttle, the brake, blow the horn your chance yeah they uh, actually they have a, i believe it's a mile and a half of the of the <laughs> line that's open that the rail that the museum uses for these they also have operating three cars and trolleys that you can ride around the facility on it's a super cool it's a super nice. cool place absolutely nice. so yeah they have a trolley wire around in a loop and i think it's 90 acres out there total that they have uh it's a it's a it's a good day out there it really is a good day there's tons to see. Um, next up is Los Angeles Union Station. This is, uh, of course, an iconic structure in Southern California, the last of the great uh, uh, railway stations to be built in 1939. Um, you'll get a chance to see some of the behind the scenes areas where the public is not uh, normally allowed, the ticket concourse being one of those. And uh, that's, uh, it, 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 you've seen it in a million movies, whether you know it or not, when you look down that center aisleway there, you, you've seen it tons and tons. So um, that's a really, really nice uh, tour. The Fred Harvey restaurant is there. We're going to have lunch at the Fred Harvey restaurant. Well, it's not the Fred Harvey anymore. It used to be the Fred Harvey restaurant. Then the next day, we've got uh, the Travel Town Transportation Museum. This is a uh, county uh, museum. It's got um, an amazing array of static displays. You should just see some of it there. There's um, a number number of uh, examples of steam locomotives. They're listed here on the website. You can see them uh, get up close and personal. You can see the interior of the uh, building that's housing some of the freight cars there. The, the uh, Travel Town Museum also is home of the uh, Walt Disney Barn. This is the barn from Walt Disney's property where he used to work on his live steam locomotive. Hmm. Yep. Uh, then on that same day, once we're, oh, oh by the way, at Travel Town, we're also going to see the uh, uh, N-scale 
uh, club layout there, the uh, East Valley lines, mm -hmm. very nice layout. And then uh, once we leave there, we're going out to Rail Giants. Rail Giants is at the uh, uh, LA County Fairgrounds. This is where the uh, big boy resided for many years and was uh, removed a few years ago up to Cheyenne and um, uh, reconditioned and made road, road ready. Uh, there's still plenty of locomotives and buildings uh, left there to, to view. You can see the that's the uh, Arcadia Station used to be down there by the uh, um, the, the racetrack uh, the uh, in Arcadia. You, the, the fruit growers, the climax there. That's a very unique locomotive, and uh, that's a that's a oh at at that location we are going to visit the Fairplex Garden Railroad for the Garden Railroaders. We've got a lot to offer on this uh, convention for garden railroaders on our layout tours and on our prototype tour here, of course. We um, might have good weather, maybe because we have good weather, maybe that's why. Oh yeah, yeah. No, no it's frost. No, heave. no, no frost heave here for sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. No snow plows so, on the no snow plows on the garden railroads around here. Yeah. Uh, Joel will be hitting some of those that are coming up on the layout tours, but. Um, the, the, then uh, on Thursday, we've got to, uh, a double header. This is, uh, we're going to stop in first at Metro Rail Fleet Services. Metro Rail is the light rail system that serves uh, the greater Los Angeles area. And we're going to see how they keep them on the road, how they maintain them, hmm. uh, clean them, recondition, and so forth. And then from there, we're going to move up to Gemco Yard. This is in the San Fernando Valley. This is, uh, this, this tour is going to be hosted by a Union, Union Pacific uh, conductor Brakeman, who's had over 40 years on the job. You wouldn't believe it. He's, he must have started when he was five. But uh, wow. he's, uh, uh, this is uh, this is where when General Motors had a um, a plant in Van Nuys, and that's where they built Camaros. And he can tell you about the days of the Southern Pacific and uh, bringing the parts in to put the Camaros together and getting them back out of there. Uh, now it's, of course, a Union Pacific property, and we're going to watch them assemble what's called the Guadalupe Hauler. Guadalupe Hauler goes up the coast to a little town called Guadalupe, north of Santa Barbara. Um, so that's uh, uh, boots on the ground. You'd get kicked out if you were trying to get in there at any other time, and you'll get to see an, an outstanding nice. uh, example of modern-day railroading there. Again, the thing I point out to folks to come to these the conventions is you can't go to Gemco Yard and watch a train be assembled as a regular human being, right? That doesn't happen. And you can't get into fleet services to watch them work on the railroad, on the cars. So, again, it's things you cannot do otherwise unless you're with us at the, at the, at the Surf Liner Convention. Um, thanks, Pat. So let's, let's, let's move on to um, the clinics. So if you're interested in giving a clinic, just click on the enroll to give a clinic and send us some information about you and the clinic and we'll get you up on the schedule and you'll get to earn some points for your, for your achievement uh, in uh, volunteer or, or uh, author. Um, and so we have, as I said, 74 clinicians, some people's names you'll recognize. Um, George Bogutak, of course, Bill Brown, Gary Butts is a mod, master model railroader. He's a local guy in our division. Uh, very, very talented modeler. He's won first place in locomotives uh, at convention at national conventions in the past. Um, and as I said, there's lots of folks' names you recognize. I don't recognize all of them because I don't know everybody. Um, and then clinics by category, I mentioned before, all kinds of clinics and fantastic variety of clinics given by a, a variety of folks. So. Now, let's look at tours, layout tours. I know that everybody's been waiting for this because this is, this is the coolest part. Um, I have, a, as Ken mentioned, I have an operating end scale layout in my house, in my garage, and I'm on the layout tour. I'm also have an operating session through the OPSIG that you can sign up for if you're interested. So we have, as I said, we have five layout tours, one each day, and each one is sort of well, because LA is so big, they're divided basically geographically, essentially. So we're not spending time a lot of any time on the road. You don't need to. The first one is the first. This first one is the Pasadena Special up north. The Pasadena Model Railroad, which I'll show some some pictures of in a minute, uh, has been around for I think I want to say 60 years, 80 years. 
It's a 5,000 square foot layout. Five, and I have some, I have a video of it that I'll, I have a video of it that I'll show in a minute. Sorry. Um, and then we have the grand route, which is on Tuesday, features a number of home layouts, uh, my New York and Turin Western end scale layout, Maury Fishman, Maury Fleischman's got two layouts, an HO and an F scale. Um, and a G-scale tortoise and lizard bash railroad and G-scale. So this will be a nice day, different types of items. And again, I'll show you a couple of pictures of my layout. Je and then on Wednesday, we've got Jeff's train times, Northern Division, uh, HO scale, Milwaukee Road layout, Santa Susana Pacific model and LA Live steamer. So a great tour here for a variety of different types of railroading, the different types of scales. Um, Thunder Road is a more local, is a local, uh, small, a local tour of uh, layouts in the area. Gary lives in Huntington Beach. He's got a, not, he's got an interesting layout that started out as an eight by ten, eight, uh, four by eight, eight layout, and has now taken over his entire living room. Uh, <laughs> he and a, he and his uh, uh, this, um, deceased wife Sandy built that layout together over the years. They were both. Uh, talented model builders. Almost everything on this layout is scratch built or kit bashed, including the locomotives wow, and the cars. Um, also, if you want, if, if, may I interject? If you want to see the coolest rail bus ever, you got to go to see Gary's layout. He has a rail bus, the custom built the gears for for the drive wheels. It has sound. It has interior and exterior lights, working marker lights, in HO scale. It is something to see. It's a phenomenal, a phenomenal yeah. work. He's a, he's a great model. On this layout, on this tour, you're also going to see a couple of G scale layouts. David Shegog's Castle Peak and Thunder, which is modeled, which is a, a modeled after a Disneyland Railroad. So I have some pictures of that to show you. Gary Johnson's Johnson Railroad G scale. Marty Bradley's Oakhurst Railroad is really interesting. It's H, H O and G. It's a logging railroad in Northern California, but what he's done is something I've never seen before. And it's it's right around the corner from my house. So I operate on, on Marty's layout periodically. You, you operate the logging road inside, you get to camp five, you walk outside to the garden and you're at camp five at G scale. And now you continue on the road at G scale with the same consist and the same locomotive in the garden railroad. It's a super cool concept. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. Never seen that before. And it's all very well done. The the, the HO layout is really, really well done. Hmm. Um, we got Mon Ron Varnell's uh, HO skill. Uh, any era Western Railroad, the e e -A -W -R. Beautiful layout in an industrial uh, 1400, I want to say 14 or 2400 square foot industrial park, like industrial uh, suite. And he has a phenomenal uh, collection of brass locomotives as well, lining all the all all the walls of the of the place. And the layout's fantastic. Um, Frank Kenny's uh, CPRX is a beautiful double deck, large, full two two car garage plus a helix room plus a traffic control center, double double le two levels, Tehachapi Pass layout, phenomenal layout. And Ken Frank's a friend of mine, and I operate on this layout quite often. And then the Belmont Shore Club is a fantastic club layout in in, uh, in Belmont Shore down in San Pedro. So we've got fantastic layout tours uh, available and I'm gonna stop sharing for a second and come back to my camera. And then I'm gonna go to show you some of the pictures of some of these layouts. If I can get my camera to work. There we go, you see me? There we yes, are. Yes, okay. there you are. <laughs> so, let me show you some pictures of some of these railroads. Um, I'm going to go back to the share screen. Guys, you want to ask any questions yet? Or I know I'm talking a lot. I have, ten, have no. a tendency to do that. Mm -mm. No, I'm, I'm fine. Okay. Every show is different, and this show is different than every show we've ever done. But, and so will next week's. Mm -hmm. This is just perfect. <laughs> yeah. It's, this is, is what it's it all is. right here. I got my back to the say, camera, though. He's simplifying my edit that I don't have to drop in all of these clips, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Right? It's all right there. Screen capture, too. Right? Mm -hmm. But right. where did they just go? Oh. I think he's getting his He's trying uh, to get his uh, files uploaded. Yeah. All okay. right. So so uh, this is Marty's inside HO. It's a dual, two-level HO layout. 
wow. and, the out, and we go right out to the outdoor lake. Uh -huh. Nice. Yes. yes. Boy. This is Frank Kenny's CPRX layout. I hope you see this. Let me see. There we go. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. Now, I think he showed me this. This is good. Watch this. Yeah, this is some good stuff here. Is this, are we coming up in your layout, Joel? We can be. We will be, yeah. Okay. So, wow. this is the traffic control center. It's 16 tracks, eight on the top, eight on the bottom. And it's a beautifully done layout. Yes. Of the oh, look at that scenery. Between, um, Man. Yeah, very, very nice. He's, he's an excellent modeler. And the terri and it's a terrific layout. And that's end scale. That's, that's end scale. Look at that helix. Check that out. Oh, wow. And gosh. check it out, the mirror. Look at the mm -hmm. foresight and putting up the mirror to see both sides of it. Yes. It's like the idea. whole thing up from a exactly. top point of view. Sorry, what was that, Daniel? I just was trying to comment to say it's like you can actually see your train from a roof point of view. Right. So you can say, hey, where's the rest of my train? Well, mm -hmm. if something happens, there you go. You just look up in the mirror. Oh, there it is. Yep. That's amazing. That takes some it's quite engineering side. precision. Very cool. Oh, we'll skip, skip to my layout. Now, this is an end scale layout, and it is actually very good. This is a good layout. I saw pictures of it the other day, and I was I was just... Mesmerized? <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> like, just when you start showing pictures, I can't even talk. I'm just going to watch. So this is my this is my 125 square foot New York Ontario Western end scale railroad. Um, this might look familiar to you. My layout was featured in the January 2024 NMRA magazine. Okay. The cover uh, the, inside the magazine. Um, upstate New York, 1954. Uh, the O&W is a terrific layout for modeling because it has tremendous character. Only had four classes of diesel locomotive. DE 44 tonners, um, NW2s, FTs, and F3s. That's all they had, and I have more than they had. Hmm. Um, <laughs> this is end scale layout designed for operation. It's in the two car garage. It's about two thirds of the two car garage. Uh, we have regular operating sessions about every other month. Um, and uh, custom, most of this, most of the most of the diesels are custom painted, although at one point you could buy Intermountainance O and W. And uh, Cato ha also had some O&W. So we run with seven operators during a session. Um, we have a dispatcher using a, um, a prototype-based uh, dispatcher sheet. And we have a, um, yard a yard master, an assistant yard master, and then four road crews running locals through trains, coal turns, um, and a variety, of, a variety of trains. So it's upstate New York, Catskill Mountains in, 19 in 1954. Uh, this is one of the scratch-built structures. This is the um, uh, York, uh, excuse me, freight office in Delhi, New York. That's built from pictures and some photos that someone sent me and some basic uh, basic dimensions. And I drew the plans and built the lay, built the built the, the, the building. Um, some kits, and this is the, this is probably the most finished portion of the layout at this point. This is Delhi. This track plan is actually very, very similar and true to the prototype. Uh, here's, the, here's the freight depot again. Close up of the freight depot. This is, again, Delhi. Um, on the left-hand side here behind Chuck is the, the fictitious town of Shellysburg, where the O&W um, interchanges with the Dac Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western. Some custom painted NW2s. Um, Actually, this this tower was built by my by Frank Kenny, and this is a town of Shellysburg. It's it's so much harder to model an end scale. Um, I think yeah. I mentioned that to you when I talked to you about this. That the precision is so much more that you have to be precise with your track work, your turnouts, than HO scale. And for him to be scratch building these buildings off of photographs, that's got to. I know how hard that is. Mm -hmm. You have my full respect. Thank well, you, thank you, Ken. Back about so, 30, 30 years ago, all this end scale stuff, you'd have to, like, I don't know, have a way to kit bash it all yourself now. With and he's pretty. been in it. Yeah. He said he's yeah. been in it for 40 years. So he remembers the old <sighs> tricks. Right. You know, mm -hmm. the yes. Aurora Postage Aurora. Stamp. Yeah. <laughs> wow. this, this engine shed right here, I built as a teenager. I've been schlepping it around for 50 years. Great. No, no, no. Wow. <laughs> I love seeing old stuff like that. All I did, I took it out of the box. I took it out of my storage. Um, I said, "Oh wow, that's a lot of glue on this thing." Yeah. <laughs> so, Still, yeah. so there's, now there's ivy on it. Right there, you and, go. Uh, <laughs> I weathered the crap out of it, 
and that and there you have it. Um, that's awesome. So, this, oh, this oh, oh, I wanted to see this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk about this. So this is an interesting project. This mm -hmm. is actually a curved viaduct, um, and it's it's a combination of uh, cast resin and styrene. I can't, in order to get the curve of the viaduct, they took the old Atlas viaduct, cast it in uh, silicone, and as it was curing, I I, um, I curved it. Okay. And then, in order to avoid having to build it all in resin, because I had the piers, I couldn't make the piers out of the resin for, they were too thin, I couldn't get them to work. So I had to then have resin deck and plastic piers. And when you curve a bridge, what you don't realize is that you have to make it deeper than it was straight. And so every one of these angles under here is different and every one of these piers is a different length. Okay. And what I ended up doing was laminating <clears throat> the resin to a piece of styrene and then turned it into a styrene dome. Wow. So everything behind the fa this facade is all styrene. And that was a, that was a, a bright moment in my life. Oh, so. you've got to send us pictures of that when it's finished. We have to see your final scene. Uh, I will. I will. Thank you. So that's, so that's, that's my layout. I don't, I spent a lot more time on that than I expected, actually. Well, let's, uh, let's circle back to the convention for a minute. I wanted to touch on a couple of things. Uh, the uh, special interest groups that are going to be attending, such as OPSIG, the operations guys, LD SIG. Right. Uh, all, all, there's going to be all the normal activities that they usually have, the uh, layout tours with the LD SIG and OPSIG, uh, uh, the, the dinners and so forth. Uh, we also have the Women in Model Railroading SIG attending and other SIGs as well. And you should uh, refer to the website for more information on that. Um, and then for the people who are not necessarily uh, uh, railroad oriented, uh, who've been referred to in the past as railettes or non rail, we're going to switch that up again and we're going to go, we're calling them the Plus One Club. Right. So we have our Plus One Club that is going to be doing some activities that aren't necessarily railroad related. We also have some general interest tours that will. Um, uh, attract uh, the whole family, hopefully. Uh, we have uh, the Academy Museum of Motion Pictures where you can, I don't know if you've ever seen a movie called The Godfather, but if you want to see his office set up close and personal, this is the one place to see it. It's a very fascinating museum. It, it's all about the production of motion pictures. Um, the uh, Warner Brothers is another tour that we're offering, Warner Brothers Studios. That that's cool. uh, celebrating their 100th anniversary this year and you know it's there's too many to name too many tv shows and movies that were made at one another mm -hmm. so that's another one of our general interest tours we're also going to the queen mary the uh iconic symbol of long beach if you will yes um uh, we are offering a cruise to catalina island those two we're going to have up on our website very soon um and then in the hotel if there's any quilters in the family, we're offering uh, uh, the Project Linus Room, which is a traditional thing that the NMRA does at their annual conventions, uh, national conventions, uh, and that's creating quilts for uh, kids in children's hospitals that we donate. Um, there's uh, the, the Plus One Room, where there'll be activities for people to do while they're uh, attending uh, the, the convention and need some place to be at the hotel. And then, um, I don't know if any of you guys went to the Texas convention, but there was an outfit called Mini Prince down there that oh, yeah. would uh, scan, scan Bernard, your body. Our friend Bernard. Bernard Helen. Yes. Yes. Yep. yes. And uh, create you in your chosen scale. <laughs> the, the mini me, as he calls them. Right. Uh, yeah, we've had that gonna, done he's, here. He's going to be there as well. So uh, that'll be coming up on the website shortly as, as well. Give them the website. Let's give them the website address. It's yes. www surfliner2024.org so check out the website it's constantly being updated we're um, by the time you're right now if you went up right now the timetable wouldn't be up but on monday the timetable we're updating the clinic information right now and it's taking a little longer than we hope. but by the time this goes up it should be everything. 
Very cool. You know, you guys have got these flower Hawaii shirts on, and I just <laughs> noticed it's got your logo on it for the show. I don't know who picked that shirt design, but give them a raise. <laughs> yeah, it looks pretty cool. <laughs> I yeah. love them. They're cool. <laughs> I love this coordinated effort that you guys have made, and I just, I hope that he yells but stitch those for you. If he didn't, <laughs> he needs to, because those are beautiful. Are those stitched? Is that stitched or printed? Yeah. Did Denny well, do them? Is, yeah, this is... Um, Did Denny yeah, do them? Um, you guys are the wrong person here. <laughs> They're real, it's, well it's half, nice. Yeah. All right, guys, so in closing, have we covered a lot of the stuff? It sounds like you've covered all the bases. Pretty much, I think. It's going to be a, it's going to be a terrific convention. We encourage everybody to come and visit Southern California, enjoy the weather, enjoy the time, enjoy each other. It's a fantastic opportunity, and we know it's going to be a great convention. We're working hard on over two years. Very cool. Um, it's all coming together. It's two months out now, and we're you know cleaning up the details at this point, getting the thing, getting everything finished up. But we're going to be ready and happy to see everybody. Okay. I know, right? All right. I know, yeah. right? Yeah. Any stupid questions? Okay. Uh, so this might be a stupid question to ask, though, but um, do you guys have like a train show at the end of the weekend, or is it just specifically the convention with all the layout tours, clinics, stuff like that? Big question. Uh, yeah, there, there will be a, a national train show at the convention. Um, it's going to be smaller than what you might be accustomed to. It's going to be in the hotel. Uh, it is going to be on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and reg registrants uh, will have free admission to the train show gotcha. all three days. Uh, major okay. manufacturers are going to be attending. We're uh, developing the, the list now. Uh, it'll be there'll be more on the website very shortly about that, and uh, it's going to be convenient because you don't have to go to another state to attend the train show, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you don't even have to walk across the street. Is that the beginning of the week or the end of the week? That's going to be at the end of the week. That's okay. the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. All right. Our, uh, our banquet is, uh, again, on, on Saturday night as is traditional. And then after that, we're planning a little after party for the people who just want to hang out, listen to some music, maybe do some dancing. Ken, I know you want to dance, right? <laughs> uh, That's it. I've danced on this show. I think we danced at Vic's house. Yeah, some of us did. I didn't. I didn't either. <laughs> Have you seen the numbers? The numbers of that show that we had discussing the purchase of Model Railroader magazine. Oh, mm -hmm. right? No, I haven't. Um, I think that show is our second most popular podcast show right now that we've ever shot. I know it, it broke that number today. Good. Okay. All right. Um, wow. That's very nice. Yes. That's kind of neat. And mm -hmm. we're, we're well beyond 2 million views overall. I started snooping around my YouTube channel just to see what was going on this week. Mm -hmm. And it's all positive. I just, it's amazing. Readers' comments have been great. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, it's just really have, we've had some great shows. I think a lot of people enjoyed watching that April 2017 show last week. Right. With some of the how-tos in it, mm -hmm. and I know how much they miss that. Blast from the past. Um, yeah. Coming up next week, that'll be the 8th of June, we have Neil, Neil. Moltz East from Coast East Coast Circuits. Circuits is going to be here. I've heard rumors that my father, Ken Bird, might be in town. If we can coax him, we'll get him <laughs> on, bring him on the show. Heard rumors. I, like I know, that. right? <laughs> All right, gentlemen, anything else in closing here before we go? Pat, I wanted to point out to you, uh, you mentioned the Camaro plant in Van Nuys, California. The other place that they were built was uh, Norwalk, or, uh, Norwood, Ohio. And we used oh. to see those coming through St. Louis all the time. Mm -hmm. So that's what I brought tonight to show, just by coincidence, <laughs> auto racks full of new Camaros and Firebirds. Wow. That's so, cool. Yeah. Um, our, our host on that tour, like I say, he's, he's got, a, you know, he's, an, he's a an old head, and he's got stories to tell about what I'll went bet. on at the GM. Oh, I'll sure. bet. I'd love to yep. hear that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, right. thank you guys for uh, for all you're doing to help support the hobby, too. Appreciate your uh, effort. Thanks, no, thank Thanks you. for being yes, on. Thank you. It's a lot yes, of fun. It is. We we get to meet some great people like the two of you. I know. And, and look at all the other wonderful people uh -huh. we've met. Mm hmm Oh, my God. The Mr. Rogers Show. Paul Lolly. Yeah. Remember that show. Right. I don't that know what number great. it was, but, yeah. Show number 50, by the way, is our number highest rated viewed show. Uh, show number 50. Mm. It's like it. 
and I'm, I, th I think it's because Vic Smith is in there with his layout for the first time, and Chris Powell, and it was our one hour long 50th oh, okay. special. Oh, yeah. So we covered a lot of grounds. I actually watched bits and pieces of it. And now I know why it took four days to edit it. Plus I was a <laughs> lot slower back then. This one shouldn't take that long. <laughs> no, it shouldn't. All right, guys. Well, nice we are gonna you take our NCE power system here. I know you're getting all excited, Richard. Look at that. I use that to program the engines that are running on the layout uh, tonight. I could not get my other system to program the engines, and this one did it. I love how simple this is. It gave me the screen. It told me what to do. I did it, and they work, and they're running tonight. And so thank you. Thank you. It just makes life so much easier when it works. Oh, NCE, yeah. the power of DCC. Best hobby in the world with some of the best people in it. We'll have Joshua Barton on next week. Yes, we will. And with that said, guys, let's go run some trains. All right. All right. That was an right. awesome, was thorough, no, no, that was a very thorough, excellent description of what to expect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, thanks for being on, you guys. And it's going to be a beautiful weather, gorgeous show. I know, this is awesome, you two. Thank you very much. Okay, we got to do a thumbnail, so that means each one of you guys needs to wave at the camera. And we're going to hold up things and look goofy on our end and smile so I can create a thumbnail for this show. Would I have permission to use your logo in the thumbnail if I so choose? You do. Okay, thank you. Ready, set, go. Everybody look at this camera. I need you guys to smile and show teeth. <laughs> and we've got that. Good job. Woohoo! All right. The show down. Okay, so. Do uh, you want any of the photos that I created um, that I didn't show? Because I have a few of each of the layout. Do you want to be able to splice those in, or do you not to the bottom of that? I think it might be okay. I think they're on your website. If I remember, you can click on something and see something. If that's the fact, I can screen capture it if I have to. There's only one picture of each layout. I had like some additional ones, but again, up to you. If you want them, I'll send them. If you don't want them, that's No, you guys did a good job. Everything was very thorough. Um, I, you can't you can't explain an NMRA show in five minutes. It's one of those things where there's so much in-depth information, and every single show is different. So all the tours are different. Mm -hmm. The roulettes, the girls, you know. Here, I think they took them to the zoo, and you know, different little things like that.